Hey everybody, Charlie Nine or Two here, and welcome to the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. I've never played the Stanley Parable, and definitely never played the Ultra Deluxe version. Saw it on the Steam Store page and decided why not check it out. So we're gonna do that right after the intro. All right, here we go. Before we start, our, take a quick look at our settings here. Let you see what we've done. All right, so our haven't really done much here other than made sure that we had subtitles on. The audio, you can see my mix here. We may need to change that as we go. Video, all right, we've got it at 2K, 16 by 9, 59 hertz. I don't really see a reason to go higher than that uh, because once I compress it down for YouTube, you won't notice it. And then there are our controls. Really didn't change a whole bunch other than resolution and screen size because I do play on an ultra wide monitor. So now that we have 16 by 9, you will not have anything cut off of the edges here. So I don't know anything about the game other than it's a walking simulator. It's supposed to be funny. Will there be puzzles? I don't know. I don't really know what all you are supposed to do with this game. I do like the effect of um, the infinite screen here. We have like a camera looking at us here. Pretty cool. So let's begin and see what we uh, find out. Ever the end is never the end. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Well, good for Stanley. If he's happy, then... And then one day, uh -oh. something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. All right, so we are Stanley. We do not have legs. Okay. I mean, at least he gets an office. I mean, it, it looks more like a closet more than anything but at least he gets his own office all right clock all right almost 10 o'clock can we interact with things if we click the mouse we can we can move can we zoom in i want to read this it appears that all i can do is move i can Walk right through this chair like it doesn't exist. So Stanley's dead, right? We're just a ghost. This is Stanley's number, 427. All right, well, let's... G814 to F1. I do have some scratch paper here in case there are puzzles. Uh, those of you that have watched my channel before should know that I've played... It a lot of adventure, first-person puzzle-type games such as Myst and uh, Quern. And in those games, taking notes is paramount. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's write down 427. I don't even know if this is a puzzle game, but if it is, I want to be prepared. All right, let's go out of the office. We've made it. 429... 
four to eight. Yeah, see, like all of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. So at least we had a like our own room. Like here, you gotta like share a cubicle area. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Who farted? Who farted indeed, coffee mug? Who farted indeed? Can we click on this? Number one, dad, 435. I'm trying to see if I can read that. Recommendations from the oversight committee. This is just like some Orwellian stuff going on here. All right, let's go this way. That's a nice picture. This doesn't seem to actually look outside. It just looks like uh, an illuminated panel. Okay, we're in the 420s. <laughs> 420. There's stuff on the floor. Can I crouch? Ooh, I can. Ooh, what does that say? Knowing your city. Before you can possibly know where to begin your now, your new street vending operation, you first have to get to know your city. I'll use Georgetown as an example in this book, but in order to really get to the knowledge, it's best to go explore. Hmm. No in our city. 419. We go through doors? We cannot go through doors. Leaf. Garfield's mug. Anything behind the door? Nope. What is that? Is that the little uh, windmills in the back? I can't tell what those towers are. Sails in the quarter. That looks like a caricature of someone. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Well, do we have to? What if we go in this door? This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Hmm. Are we fighting against the narrator? Is that, like, the intent here? That looks like a, like a back room back there. Nice path. Keep dry. Is this the lounge? Ah, yes. Truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. What is it about this place? The weeks I've spent here, they feel like... Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Looking at this letter. Really worth it. It says the weeks feel like mere seconds. Man, I can bear, I gotta like really get close to the screen here to try to see point, this. Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. Man, I, I just can't read that. I can't zoom in far enough. Maybe you guys can uh, pause the video Stanley and try to read that. waiting for more dialogue. But when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. Oh, we're admitting that this is a game now. Hmm. So some textures are really sharp, like this letter here. But this is not, unless it's meant to be stylized. Coffee 
coffee nut. Yeah, see, that's it's not a very high resolution texture there on that coffee machine. So I know this game came out a while ago. I honestly couldn't tell you how long ago, but this. But at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. But this ultra deluxe edition seems rather new. At least Steam was advertising it as if it was new, so I decided to pick it up and give it a shot since I'd never played the OG Stanley Parable, and I've never watched anybody else play through it, so this is completely blind. Ooh, that's where we're supposed to go, right? Before we go in here, though... Well, why does this desk feel so tall? It's a drafting desk, I got it, but it still feels tall. Can't jump. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Do not lie. If you're lying right now, stop. That doesn't seem like something you'd find in the workplace. More letters. And whatever this is. Very warehouse-esque. I don't like the doors closing behind me. I feel like that means my choices are permanent, and I don't like that. It scares me. That is some tall shelves. How do you even get to the stuff, like, midway up there? Why is there a forklift up top here? Do not jump from the cargo lift while it's in motion. Will cause death. Penalty for misuse. Penalty for jumping. Well, if it causes death and the penalty is 5000 who's going to pay that? How does the lift work? I don't have an interact button. Look, Stanley, I think well, we jump. we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm but in his eagerness to prove <laughs> that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. The end? Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. The end is never the end, it says. All right. Will things have changed? Got some music. All right, let's, um... All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. We didn't go to the meeting room last time, so... Let's do that this time. Also, let's look at this. Username access. I wish there was a zoom in. Is there? Oh, there is an interact. Oh, you can interact. Hold on, let's look at um, controls. Forward, back, left, right, jump. Interact is E. And then there is a crouch, but there's not a zoom in. So E. Can I close this? It seems very limited what I can interact with. What does this say? How the mighty have fallen. That's the same. Okay, whoop. Input received. Does that do anything? Eight Mondays. Can we run? We can't run. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Let's do that. So this should be the meeting room, correct? Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Termination Tuesdays. Financial panic meeting. We're broke Wednesdays. Mergers. What to do about 432? 
451's private time. We are 427. Rip Franz. Push off funding. Get Chris out of the broom closet. Fire paper guy. Who moved my desk? Have you seen my stapler? Future was yesterday. Tomorrow is now. Tomorrow. Complete today's unfinished agenda items. Right next day's agenda reflects employee. Jim. Jim gets a name. The boss appreciation minute. Need to do some uh, keystone correction. Solving interpersonal conflict. If you ever find yourself in conflict with another diligent employee, like yourself, but more inclined towards conflict, unless you're the kind of per... What are your dreams for the future? Plant life. Transcend. Metamorphosis. Less air. Less air? Pollution. A boat. Tips for not getting fired, talk less, do unbelievably amazing work all the time, every day, with no exception, expectation of promotion or recognition. Don't get fired. How to solve a dispute with a, dispute with a coworker. Let it ball up inside you, take it out passive-aggressively on other coworkers, resent coworkers for not supporting you more. Using slides to assure employees that everything is okay. Blue graphic in the header, and then throw some bevel on all text. Everyone is unique. You most of all. You're all a special snowflake. Just like everybody else. Charts and slides. Synergy. Monetize free to play. No. Wait, was this a free to play game that I actually did pay for? Right at which charts on the same slide depict the same information. <laughs> Increase in graphs per slide. <laughs> and then boss appreciation. I think this is what it was on when we first looked over here. So next should be... Yeah, conflict. Pie charts. Help. I'm going to post it. What do people want? Things? Money? More money? Things? But with the money to buy more things? Graphs? Graphs about things and money? Violet James. Happy feelings. Can't get that one. Fired. New product. Graphs about things and money. The stock market is somewhere here. Colored in segment stripes. Requires more secondary research. What is hot? Teenagers. Profits, 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 and profits. Bi quarterly post review, review. 402 and 405 want to get rid of the deaf sport portion of the primary review schedule, but I think that's a stupid idea. More water coolers and more water cooler heaters. Okay. Throw something in the ideas bin. One, no more bins, trash cans. Renaming of the idea bin, firing of me, idea bin. Space between the teenagers, size of demographics, and teenagers. What do we got here? Graphs and things. Red ink and the TPS report. Ah, I get it. All right, so we're at the meeting room. Nothing in there. There's a the broom closet. Somebody's supposed to be in here. Can we interact? We can open things. Okay, this changes everything. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. What is that reel down there of, like, cabling? This is, like, prime fallout duct tape. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Odd that they wouldn't at least paint the broom closet. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. F.A., you say? This is a family channel? 
And we don't talk like that here on purpose, only when we're playing Dark Souls Coming games. To a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But I want to see what's downstairs. But I also want to see my boss's office. Ooh, it's creepy red. We're going downstairs. Like a moth. Oh, what is this? It's another note that I'm not going to be able to read because I can't zoom in far enough. But I'm sure you guys can pause and zoom that in. Looks like a cat on a motorcycle down there. I'm down for that. Oh, you can just get in a car and leave. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe... He thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? I already noticed that. Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay.
Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Hmm. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Is it? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Huh, okay. Did you call anybody? Okay. We've started again. Four twenty seven, hate Mondays. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co workers. So, was that just like an ending or a death? Wait, an input. That's two boxes of input received. There is persistence here in a form. That screen is off. Hmm. Okay, can we open these doors? No. All right, we're going to the right again. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Trying to doors this time. That's all the same. Wow, yes, this room. What a beautiful room. What a gorgeous, gorgeous room. Thank goodness Stanley had taken this detour, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. So we haven't went the first open door on our left, but we're going to continue this way and we're not going to jump off of the Stanley was so bad at elevator, following directions, it's incredible lift. he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Okay. Danger everywhere. All right, um, progress? I don't know. No, can't open that. Two B three. 
Do not stand on this side of fence. Well, I'm already in the wrong. No buckets past this point. No buckets? Trying all the doors this time. A new chapter de detailing document features has been added to your rule book. Check all information thoroughly. Deny any applicant with discrepant documents. Refer to the audio transcript to correlate entrance statements. Glory to Arstatska? Arstatska? Our stats go. Wanted criminals. Ministry of Justice. Is this papers, please? I feel like that's what that is. At now least it reference. carefully. This is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Okay, he said he wanted to prove that he was on my side. So we're gonna we're gonna test him this time. Let's go through the red door. Oh, thank God, you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running, just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? I just... I wanted to stop. I would... We would both be so much happier if we just... Stopped. And I think... Well, I think I have a solution. Here, let me show you. Death? Hmm. What do we want? What are we looking for? Hmm? I don't know, but we're going to find out next episode. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my content, please consider a like, a comment, and our subscribe. Stay tuned for the next episode. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.